Robot in three days, 2018. As you know, we started by looking really heavily into the strategy, uh, and you can see that in our other video of how we went through that. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about our design process and where we went with that. We started off, we did some whiteboard drawings, just some quick low level sketches. Thought we had a pretty solid idea as far as doing a single axis arm. Moved that into CAD to look at more specific dimensions, just doing some blocking out of the dimensions to make sure we're gonna stay within the specified rules for this year's game. The arm is going to be a single axis arm and we decided that we were going to do that because we want to make it as simple as possible. We're going to use some dart linear actuators and have them be able to fold up and down. So the idea is we'll have an end effector on the end and we'll be able to lift it up and score and we're going to have to add some kind of mechanism on top of it that we can flip up to reach up and grab the bar so we can do a pull up and that's why another reason why we're using the dart actuators is they have a huge amount of force um, so with a single mechanism or a kind of hybrid mechanism we should be able to uh, score um, we don't know if we'll be able to score on the very high position in that six and a half foot position but uh, we know for sure in the low and the mid we'll be able to score we also knew that we needed to have an end effector on this arm so we broke that off onto two teams we had a pneumatic gripper team and a roller gripper team. And those two teams broke off and worked on their prototypes. We're using pneumatics, we're using rev extrusion, but you can use just about any material that you have to make a claw. That could be 8020, it could be wood, it could be PVC. There are lots of ways to make a claw. And the pneumatics that you have that come in the kit of parts. So it's a very quick, easy thing that any team can prototype right now. One of the advantages that it has is that we've been testing out and it's actually worked even better than we expected it to. Uh, it grabs onto the, uh, to the power cube in just about any orientation and we tried shaking it, we tried moving it side to side. If your robot gets hit, this thing has a positive control of that uh, power cube. So even if you're getting defense played onto you, it's not gonna drop it. This thing worked out much better than we were expecting. Uh, we started off just using some bolts and things onto the uh, inside the red extrusion and that worked out well. Uh, we've also now added foam to it to improve the design a little bit. Some of the cons of a claw like this is the fact that it takes up a big envelope. Uh, when the pneumatics are open, it has two positions, open and closed. When it's open, it could be fitting outside of our frame perimeter. Uh, so we just need to make sure that we design it properly and get it set inside the robot for the start of the match. Uh, one of the good things about this though is that we already have an air compressor on the robot. We're using a shift on the fly transmission. If we were to decide to use this claw and we didn't already have pneumatics on the robot for other things, we wouldn't add an air compressor and all the tanks and all the pneumatics just for this uh, claw gripper. But since we've already decided that we're gonna be using pneumatics, this actually really simplifies our ability to make a, a full extra mechanism, full extra claw, uh, without the addition of extra motors. So with our roller intake, uh, we had a couple of design considerations. Sometimes uh, the cubes, uh, while they are cold cubes, are not actually cubes, can uh, tip over and have a different dimension to grab from. Uh, with our initial prototypes, we kept it a, a very rigid system that would allow us to grab cubes efficiently, but it didn't work so well if it was from an off-kilter angle or in a different direction. Um, they, what we did to uh, overcome this challenge is we put a pivot on each of the rollers and put those under spring tension. That would allow us to grab cubes from a different direction that's not necessarily lined up with the robot or a cube that's been f tipped over onto its side, onto its short side. Um, and that would allow us to grab that and get, have a lot of control authority over the cubes specifically when we're manipulating them. The downside of this system is that it is a heavy system. It may be difficult to envelope into your robot as well. Um, depending on how the size of the robots and the uh, ability to reach out outside of your bumper zone and frame perimeter, the mechanism can be quite large as well. Those are all things you have to take into account when designing a system like this. Um, something that most teams this year will uh, have to overcome. So when you're promoting your team and you're inviting people to 
participate in the build or to your shop, you gotta think about what they're gonna be working on when they come. Uh, in the past couple years, I've been bringing my daughter Riley to check out the builds, and recently she'd been saying, I don't really wanna go, because every time I go, there's not really a lot for me to work on, uh, I'm not really sure how to help, so I get kind of bored. And that started to bother me because I didn't want her to get discouraged that she didn't know how to participate in the build, even though we're using power tools and she's only six years old. Uh, we needed something for her to be excited about. So this time we actually planned an activity where we, bought, we brought in a, a, a model rocket that she and I had built before. We decided to launch it at our build space. It got me thinking, you should have activities and things for people to do when they're gonna come participate with you. So as you can see, we've had made a lot of progress, but we still have a long, long way to go. We're only about halfway through the build and the robot's not halfway done. Uh, some of the dimensions in the arm might change. We haven't quite decided which end effector we're gonna use. Um, some of the transition of the theory of the drawings to the reality of the build aren't going quite perfect, so we're having to make some changes. Um, so how are you gonna find out what happens? You need to make sure you tune back in in a couple days and see the reveal video because we're gonna show you this sweet machine uh, pretty shortly. Today we're gonna build a robot. Dory. Hey. Mac. Hey, Mac. 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 Can we build a robot already? Mikey. Hey, Mikey. <laughs> Mikey. Hey, Andrew. Yo. Barry. Barry. Oh, Danny Boy. Hey, Barry. Danny Boy. <laughs> Tell me about them national championship UCF Knights. My Tell me about them. Tell me about them. My national champions. Scott Frost. How's he doing? If Alabama has 16 national champions, we got one. One national championship. <laughs> That's 15 more to go. Come on, let's do this. <laughs> All right, we got to get busy. Tom Brady had a national championship. Tom, in his you do not bring Tom Brady in.